Welcome back to the U of Podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Freed. It is so good to be back here with you, Jordana. We were just talking about the hurricanes and the rain that's going on right now. Yes. And you said that the name of the hurricane it's is funny. what? It's the hurricane that's happening, or it's happened last week by the time this airs, Hurricane Debbie. Hurricane Debbie is so funny. such a funny name. It, that sounds like the nickname you'd give to your mom's friend who's annoying. Yes, I was going to say, like, your aunt who's, like, right. unhinged. Hurricane Debbie's Here coming she comes. through. <laughs> also, like, I feel like the name of a storm should be the full name, but I guess some people are just a Debbie. Debbie. Like Debra? Hurricane Debra? Yeah, Hurricane Debra. <laughs> Very formal. Is, that feels like, oh, we got to, like, batten down the hatches. We got to, like, put up some... You know, some planks on the windows, but it's, Hurricane Debbie is like, ugh. Who names these? It's so funny they get to, um, like, they, they pick all the, like, boomer names right. for these, which seems, like, a little unfair. Like, why not mess with the younger generation? Right. What would it be? Hurricane Timothy Shoffley? Hurricane Olivia. Uh, Hurricane Olivia. Hurricane That's No, I think that's Kylie. A- <laughs> Hurricane Kylie <laughs> sounds like a sorority girl who gets too drunk on a Saturday. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That should that they're really messing with all the moms out there. Yeah, I they are, and yeah, Hurricane Debbie, like all the Debbies escaped the whole Karen thing. You know that could have right. been them. Just as just as easily, could just have been as them. easily, yeah. like oh, we got a real Debbie coming. Yeah, yeah. I that I knew a lot of Debbies growing up. That's a real mom, boomer mom name. A hundred percent. Right. Debbie, Susan. Susan. Oh, yeah. Susan's like your quintessential mom name for our generation. Susan down the block. Yeah. Yeah. Man, how are you? What's going on now that we've done hurricane talk? Um, I'm good. (laughs) You said hurricane, but Debbie, before we started taping, I just started laughing. I mean, it's a it's an absurd hurricane name. How are you? I'm good. I feel like I am living in some weird suburban dream slash nightmare okay expand on that i feel like there's a moment when this weekend where i was like we are actually the will farrell scene in old school where he talks about what he's doing this sunday like we're going to home depot we're maybe we'll to get bed, something bath and beyond. Bed, bath and beyond i'm not sure if we'll have time right this got is a big day tomorrow you are in <laughs> you are in that mode i am yeah. in that mode and it's funny because like in the movie, the scene in the movie, they're like making fun of him. But you're right. like, how did And it, there's a moment where you're like, how did I get here? Right. When did I become the cliche? When right. did when did I, you know, oh, my God, I'm boring. Yes. Like <laughs> when I'm, not that you're boring. This is the beauty of you being a founder of Betches, I yes. think. Like you always have your toe in a very exciting world that changes day to day. You know, we. Earlier today, we're having a meeting about my soon-to-be-taped yes. comedy special. So, you know, that's a cool thing. Like, I don't think most people... No, you're like yeah, in... I'm not your average suburbanite. Right. You you always have that to hold on to. But it is weird kind of living in, in both worlds, right. in a sense. And the feeling of, like, your youth is like you have, like, your youth in one hand. Mm-hmm. And then you have, like, your super adult feeling life in the other and it just does feel like a weird toggling situation where you're not really sure what world you're in especially being in the suburbs without kids yes you're kind of like i'm not really sure who i am at this moment right and you're not like living in your home you're living in like a a kind of like a a a temporary space so like that adds to it i'm sure yeah, no, that definitely adds. There's a that's like that part of it feels like a little depressing. Like you're on Long Island in an apartment feels like. Yeah, don't I'm, say that out again. No, I, it's I just funny. got depressed. <laughs> it's funny. It is kind of depressing. It's funny. I'm like sometimes I'll turn to Mike and I'll be like, "Wow, like when I met you seven years ago, right. like, little did I know, seven years later we'd be living the dream in an apartment, well, on Long Island, <laughs> a one bedroom apartment on Long Island. We've truly <laughs> well, here we is, are. This is you know what people are you know if if I can give credit to that life and mm-hmm. lifestyle as single 39 year old guy living in Manhattan. Like there's a lot of people I'm sure that are in the suburbs are going, wow, what a great thing. And I'm like, I kind of yearn towards the suburban life. Like I kind of really? see, yeah, there's yeah. a moment where I go, Oh, it would be so nice to be in small town USA and worry about the, Small trials and problems. tribulations yeah. of a small town and hear the gossip of a small town, you know, of, of the suburb and, you know, stop being in this like New York City thing that I don't even know what that is. It just involves me drinking and then right. 
alone in a bar eating, you know, like they should I, let you. I was thinking about that actually the other like uh, last night when my my sister, Dr. Naomi, told me she she was supposed to go back to Dallas mm-hmm. and her flight got canceled because of Hurricane Debbie. <laughs> what um, <a> Debbie. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh, so she has to come back to the city. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if you guys did like. A life swap. You know, they have those movies right. that are like life swap. And I'm imagining like Naomi and her and Jeff and their three kids moving into your they, studio apartment in they West Village. came over. You have the, uh, you, you, you go to Dallas and you like, yes. what, what would it be like if Naomi were transported into your body where she woke up like the, a 39 year old single man to, living in, living in the West Village. She'd get to disappoint a lot of women sexually. <laughs> <laughs> and you would be in her. You would be in a, a wife and kids in the suburbs, or a husband well, and kids, I guess, in her case. I, I guess. Well, Jeff, you know, would get the pleasure of me in bed. I guess uh, so. But I, 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 you know, I think about that. Like, you do kind of wish you could do a day. Oh, totally. Just to go. Let me see what it's like. Let me see what it's like to be like, you know, you know, dad. Oh, totally. For just yeah. one day, and then I could decide if that's where I want to go. I say this all the time. Like, wouldn't life be amazing if, like, Monday you're like you as you right. are. Tuesday you're back in college. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday you've got two kids. Right. Like, <laughs> well, this is, the, like, the premise of a lot of sci-fi films. Like, there's, right. like, uh, where you inhabit Switch the body. the body. Yeah, Freaky Friday. It, it, right. Or, But even, like, they have, like, these futuristic things where it's, like, you go in and, like, you get to experience like what you're like in this oh, like, like drab, Mirror right? Or it's yeah. a little bit like like you're in this drab society, and then you get to hook your head into like being like whatever you know, right? A hot Manhattanite for a day, yeah. And thirteen they're, going right, on thirty, <laughs> right? So no, I they should have called me. They could have came. We could have all gone out. You, me, Naomi, Jeff, the kids. kids. <laughs> All, All gotten the, martinis. Yeah, the kids would love that. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'd love to see you spend a day with like three kids just to see like what you guys did. I'm pretty good with the kids. Yeah. Hey, Alone? I throw a ball, go chase, <laughs> bring it back. <laughs> Fetch. <laughs> Fetch. We do that for an hour. Yeah. Um, I complain to them about my dating life. They're looking at me <laughs> like, what are you talking about? This guy, Uncle Jared's weird. Amazing. Yeah. I would love, I would watch that on a TV show. Yeah. Wife swap. <laughs> Life swap. Life swap. Life swap. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so you're y- filling up the house. I'm you're- filling up the house. I feel myself becoming more boring by the day. It now, reminds me a little bit when people ask about the renovation. I don't really know if they actually care if they're just asking that as like something that right. to ask about. It's kind of like when Belle was talking about it. It's her. That was Belle's bachelorette party last weekend. Belle is back from the bachelorette party. And Belle, I wonder if you feel this way too when people are like, because when you're going through anything, people mm-hmm. that's the thing people ask when they don't know what to what the, right. when they see you for the first time in a, a month or a few weeks. How's the wedding planning going? Right. How's the renovation coming? And to me, I always kind of like. I then you repeat the same spiel. Right. Always repeat the same spiel. Repeat the same well, thing. And you're like, do they even care? Do I like, is this Well, that's fun? why you go with the standard spiel. And then if they're interested, then it gets an interesting conversation. Right. Like they would have to add a question to regular spiel or say something. It's kind of like, you know, the beauty of being a comedian is I can kind of say anything and people are like, oh, he's being crazy. But like, I think that's the beauty of like, uh, like you, if someone said to you, like, how was the bachelor party, the bachelor party? And then like their second question was who sucked? Right. You know, like that's yes, a that's real, a, that's a now more interesting talking. conversation. Right. right. Yeah. Who sucked? Like I always Which do that. Be, that's MVP, good, LVP. Give it to me. I love that. We should also do like, you know, like tell us. Which of your vend- which of your vendors is the is the LVP? Right. Also, let's go to Unplug City. Yes, I always have let's a nemesis a on business. a bachelorette party. Always have you, a nemesis. You do always when I go on one. Always someone I end up really disliking. beefing with or disliking. No, they don't know that I don't like them. Probably. Well, I think that's everybody. I think yeah. everyone goes on a bachelorette party and literally does a ranking. Yes. From oh one my god, to ten, they're like, ranking on the car ride home. Oh Amazing. yeah, who MVP, most valuable player, LVP, least valuable player. Fun I'm sure game. you have them in your head and you won't. No, you won't you can't for mine, they all I just can't came lie. To your there, party. there were no LVPs. I swear. There were, sure, sure. No, sure. She's really? winking at us. She's, she's well, what was, what was the no, peak no, and no, pit? Sure. Peak and pit of the weekend. That's oh. why, whenever someone tells me about anything they're doing, I'm always peak and pit because I'm like, I don't give a shit about the middle things that are going fine. I want. We should change this podcast to how to have good conversations yes. podcast because peak and pit. That's a great idea. 
I love that. I've I never heard that, that yeah. before. Oh, I do that all the time with anyone. Because I'm like, whenever whenever someone comes back from a trip, I'm like, I don't really give a shit about all the details of right. the restaurants mm-hmm. in Spain. Tell me the best thing that happened and the worst thing that Shorten happened. Shorten it up. Quick. Yes. <laughs> Get it to me quick. Yes. Yeah. So Peak and Pit, let's hear it. Okay. Peak was probably. Where was the bachelor yes. party? Okay. A little background. Uh, yeah. the bachelor party was in upstate New York. How many people? 20. Too many. That's a lot. <laughs> I, right. I think I invited 30. I chill 30. just went down my spine. 20? <laughs> Oh, it's you invited thirty, so that's only a sixty-six percent. Um, Are you like a likable right? person? Is that you got a lot of friends? I got a lot of pockets. I went to camp. And oh. I liked college. Mm-hmm. Okay, still have my girlfriends from high school. So a lot I have of two Jews sisters. on this bachelorette party. So many wow, Jews. Wow, a lot of hair straightening. Does your product. fiance have any sisters or anyone? Uh, a brother and a sister-in-law, but they just moved, so she couldn't come. Sadly. Okay. Thank God you said. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I love her. No, Shout out. Her. No, but that, that, but no, no, but also like there's some, sometimes you invite people to the bachelorette that are like, you got to invite them because right. they're like related to you. And I'm not saying this is your case. I'm just saying a lot of the times there's like the people you couldn't not invite them. That'd be offensive, but like right. they don't really want to go and you don't really want them to right. go. And when they like can't make it, you're both like. As my my Great. parents would always say, you've done everyone a favor. Yeah, yes. like 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 certain people are not in the set of the puzzle. They're like a piece that doesn't fit. Exactly, they don't really yeah. want to go. Like I have right. sisters who are like in their mid to late forties. Like they don't. I don't think they wanted to go. Right. on the bachelor. We're gonna invite grandma, but we're gonna hope grandma <laughs> gets yes. that. So we both she are on the same no. page, right. but no one's gonna say that. Would you like to come? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's so funny. Um, okay, peak. Not so to get twenty cheesy. women in a house upstate. So New we York. got three houses on one property. Three houses. Which, which, which was the best thing for the big group? Because okay. everyone had their own bedroom. They Did had you divide the share houses bed. by like a uh, friend, like friend, part of life background. Yes. Right. I like. I, this. I had to split up one group, but that was the group that sees each other the most. Okay. So like my camp friends all live all, all over the place. I put them together because they never. Could. Did you name the houses? Uh, yeah, Hoktua. Oh, was one because it. it's real Hock 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 as we call it on this podcast yeah go subscribe to you up with benefits you can go listen to us talk about Hock to a Hock to a, as yeah. Jordana calls her it was called Hock Knoll actually so we had to call it Hock Knoll yeah that was one of the ho- like they okay. named them already like K-N-O-L-L yes okay okay um, and my sisters had their own apartment which is great because they're new moms so they could like Go oh, relax. Okay. okay, so they got the old woman. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're really fun, but yeah. They, we, I would have called that. They wanted to go to bed early. Facility. They wanted to sleep in yeah, like I was yeah, giving. Yeah. And they planned the whole thing, so okay. like, they deserved it. Oh, great. Yeah, and then there was a house by the pool. We had an amazing heated saltwater pool. Whoa. A lot of midnight swims. Saltwater pool? Look what is this that. from the Airbnb <laughs> website? Dude, we jumped in and we were like, something's wrong with this water. <laughs> you guys to sell us on your bad It was party. amazing. It was so, it was so amazing. Um... Okay. Midnight swim. Yeah, yeah. Lots. Right. We stayed up all night. All right. Remember, okay. we said peak and okay, peak. Yeah, yeah. No, okay, sorry. My, We're yeah. asking a lot of questions. My too. cheesy peak is that I was really nervous about like the commingling of the group. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people haven't Always met each an other. Issue. Everyone became best friends. Like everyone found a new best friend from a different group. So people okay. made, so like the single women found new single women to go out with. Yes. My yeah, New York yeah. City ladies. Oh, I love it. Right. My camp friends loved like my adult friends. Like, it was it was amazing. Everyone got along. Love Everyone it. got along. Yeah. Well, this is uh, someone with 20 pe- 30 people to invite to their bachelorette party. That's a concern. It is a You're concern. Like, is it going to be weird? Is it going to be it's a concern, but I think if you have 30 friends then you're again. I, I said, are you a likable person? That you have big groups. That means you're you're probably easy to hang out with. I'm giving you yeah. a, oh my God. a compliment. Matt props I, I, over here. <laughs> right. Yeah, there were no weak links, which was great. That's right. great. My other peak was that we got a keg, and I hadn't like been around a keg wow. in so long. People get. The keg brought keg. so much it's joy. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, yeah, we did like keg stands. Stand. If you're with so the right many. crew, though, you could be like, you've got to be with the crew. Oh my that's God. Like, it just takes one keg. gluten intolerant piece of shit to be like, hey, is there any wine? Right. It's a little <laughs> dirty. Does any, it's a little dirty. Right. <laughs> you're going to drink right oh from God, the yeah. spout? We all put our mouths on it. That's like, what I'm saying. you got to like go, you got to have the crew that's like, we're doing right. it. Yeah. We're all, we'll deal with the COVID next week. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I'm like, this is the perfect time to get COVID before yes. my wedding. Please get COVID this weekend. Um, so no, the no one's was it. that the crew got together and the keg. Uh, and the keg. Yeah. Okay. Good peaks. Pits. The weather. It was the kinda, weather. It's kind of oh, yeah, shitty. A, rainy. a little rainy. Yeah. Was it rainy? It was a little rainy last Where weekend. Where was I? Yeah. Oh. oh, I was in Atlantic City, but the, it was hot. 
it was muggy and buggy, which like sucked because we all wanted to be outside most of the time. But so no, no, no one. Did you bring bug spray. Right, yeah. We that, had to go out and get bug spray. That would be we something I would D. forget and then have to. Yeah. yeah, but we weren't like it's so in the middle of nowhere where like no one could get out. Like we got, we went on a couple trips into town. That's great. Okay, if you want to hear more about Bella and how she Bell. got to. Bell. Yeah, gonna... I hate the name Bella. Oh, actually, me. <laughs> if you want to hear about more about the person I just met a thousand times and can't remember her name, oh, I got confused with Bell and Bella. Isabella, yeah, Isabella. Yeah, Isabella. Yeah. Okay, if you want to hear more about how Bell met her fiance, we're gonna do a special content on YouTube, and we'll call it "How'd You Meet." And yeah. that's us asking people how they met their spouses, and then we ruin the story by. So this one's a great story. It's you guys story. check it out. Uh, so go check it out on YouTube. It's on YouTube right now or in the future or at some point. If it's not there, it will be there. You don't have to DM me. Where's the YouTube link? You'll find it. But And no. subscribe. And subscribe because we're always going to like put out special stuff like this. So um, no, I'm, this is exciting. When's the wedding? It's in 36 days. 36 days. In 40 seconds. No, just kidding. <laughs> Zola is like tick, teasing me with the fucking countdown. Tick. What else? I, so the bachelorette was great and everyone's happy. Amazing, oh, yeah. so, you know, a good bachelorette party really does make you more excited for the wedding, too. Oh, yeah, because like, you're excited to see those people again. Right. We, we have a reason to hang. Let's back up the hang. But I do like the idea of the singles meeting as like, because I think what people find is when people are dogged down by dating and dogged down, is that even a, I don't it, know, when what, what bogged, that? Down bogged down by okay. dating, they go, I have no one to go out with. Right. Bachelorette party is the opportunity kind of hidden in plain sight where, oh, the singles are here. Yeah. You know, oh, like minded in in individual, yes. lot in common, successful women. It happens on bachelor parties, too. Totally. And I think that was one of the best things from our mixers, from our dating mixers that we Absolutely. did. Absolutely. Is like you, even if you don't meet a guy at one of our mixers, a lot of the times you people meeting a new friend to go out with. Right. Right. I mean, like, listen. You told me before we started, you're like, you need to delete the apps. I think you do, yes. I think, <laughs> I, I haven't heard a lot of feedback yet from the Dr. Naomi episode. I was hoping to like hear Gage a lot before, sounds, you know, to yeah. see how bad I sounded, yeah. but. I don't think you sounded bad, but I do think you sound burned out. A little burned out. I've gone on many dates and they've been really nice, fun people. There is. I think you're too judgmental for the apps. And I say that in a good, right. in a good way. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. Like, listen, the girl that I asked or the, that I was like, let's see if she'll go out with me by the end of this episode. And then she said no. Yeah. She found the episode. Someone sent it. I, I don't know how. She this, must listen. I'm maybe. sure she said someone sent it to her, but she listened. And was like, you're welcome. For the content? For the content. Which is like cute. Did you go out? So now it's so funny you mentioned that. I... I go, you're welcome. And like, again, too judgy for the apps. At first, I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> like, if I'm really that's to be your, honest. That's your gut reaction that tells you something, too. Well, right. Okay. I'm Listen, this is Jared saying Jared's a piece of shit right okay. now. Like, I'm not saying I'm right. My first, and again, I call it, fu I, I call it uh, fuck you mode. Uh, uh, fuck, uh, I call FTG mode. I've, I've talked about it here. Fuck that guy mode. Right. Someone brings someone up to you in like very nice way and your immediate reaction, I don't like it, is fuck that guy. Yes. And when I hear you're welcome for the content, fuck off. I have a 14 year career. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I didn't need you for the content. And then you go, Jared, shut the fuck up. Because right. you go, she's being fun and playful. Of course she's going to say you're welcome to the content. That is yeah, the playful way. Yeah, what else is she going to say? I, think I, also, heard your, I heard the podcast and right. here's how I feel. Like, that's just being a little sassy. So then I yeah. backed it up and I wrote, without you, I'd have nothing. Okay. There you, so I now like that. I'm playing. Okay. okay? Uh, I'm honored you think I'm funny too, so win-win. So now she's being nice. She's honored that I would think she's funny. That's mm -hmm. a compliment. And, and you know what I mean? Like, and I think that happens with the apps where you there's like this like, and I did notice re-downloading the apps after a year off of them. There is a punchier thing going on, but maybe because I have comedian written it and I'd never done right, that before. People might know who you are and also try to like banter. Right. Yeah. And maybe it's a little too, you know, when someone comes up to you in a room in a party and they're like just too much right away. Right. I think that like people are going to approach you differently than they would a teacher. Sure. Uh, the, someone who works in nonprofit. Right. Like, Something I, I have to acknowledge. Yes. Um, and then I, well then it because I, and I said, what now for us? Like, cause where do we no, go from here? Right. Yeah. Like there's no question being asked. I'm not sure if like 
she's just like having fun with how stupid this what all is. What do you is. want out of it? I don't even, I want someone to want to go on a date too. Okay. You know, like I, you know, but I don't want to ask someone who's like kind of messing with me. Right. I think that's where I, you know, well, she again, probably thinks you're messing with her too. Right. So it's like we're lost in translation yes. a little bit okay. because then it becomes, I don't know. And then she writes, we would have good banter if we went out for sure. And I'm like, Okay, so she wants to go so, out. Well, then I said, is this more you debating going hours. out with me? Or like, do you want, or you're like, or you're up for going out? I said, let me okay. break through. And then it's like, I'm up for it as long as you don't make it a part of your next podcast. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Too late. <laughs> I guess we're here now. And I said, we're literally talking about this right now. And then it's like, uh, and she writes back, ugh. I mean, which is like, it, that's fun. Yeah. I, so I, are you going out? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, okay. But well, I think my next message is, when are you free? Well, that would be my next message. Here's right. my thought about the apps and you and the way you're describing. Because you are you told me that a lot of people are sort of like coming in hot, like being a little like mm -hmm. aggressive, a little defensive, a little on, um, you know, not earnest, maybe a little bit more like sure. trying to be cheeky, right? Yes, cheeky is a good word. But I think for something like the apps, you kind of have to, on the scale of like optim blind optimism, kind of almost like... Uh, a little like dumbly naive right? to bitter and sort of like watching your back before something can happen to you. Right. I think that you sort of, to have success on them, you need to lean towards naivete yeah. of like excitement and like a little bit overly enthusiastic more than ready to defend yourself. Right. And you have to have a quick drop. You have to have a quick, like, not for me. Yes. It's okay. But when you are engaged, but it's like, if you're going to engage, I think you've got to be like, positive right and like yeah yeah instead of you know fuck you i don't need the content it has to be how would i ever live without you right right you have more to, towards that more yeah. towards that yeah. i agree um yeah i definitely think the apps are ready to be deleted off my phone it's uh but i i'm happy i came back to them to be honest just yeah. to like know that yeah. maybe this isn't the spot for me or not the right place for me well that's half of anything right if you're like sort of in, still in the game of something. It's like right. part of the anxiety around it is kind of the idea that you could be doing it wrong the whole time and you just don't know. Yeah. No, I, I it is. And it's also the element of trying. Like, mm -hmm. am I trying? Hard am I enough, being, yeah. um, am I being, you know, you know, thoughtful with this process? Am I doing all the things I should be doing? You know, I think the, you know, dating and I see the same things going on with me, like where it's like dating becomes this like background noise to the things I'm like really working on. Like it's like work and all the other stuff. And then it becomes this distraction. I'm like, I'm not even like trying with the distraction. Well, I think if it's kind of like, sense. cause you're not sure if you really want it, I think. Right. So I think because you're not sure, then you're sort of like half doing it. Right. So you're like, it's the thing you really want is clear. Like you really want like, the work stuff and mm -hmm. like the career stuff. That's easier and, to say you want. That's right. livelihood. You know, like I know, some people it's like easier to say you want a relationship. Right. For me, I, it kind of was like very clear, you know, what was called, what was like calling to me as a thing mm -hmm. I need to figure out. And I think for you, that's not, it's not front and center. And if you're out there, I'm going to be in Sacramento and Cleveland. Um, I'm also going to be in Austin, Indianapolis. Uh, we had to switch the Rochester date cause I had something come up. Um, Batavia, oh, Dania Beach, Florida. I'm going back. Dania Beach. Good old Dania Beach. Going to be there for Thanksgiving. So we're going to do a Thanksgiving Ooh. show. I got to get some more material. Like, I got to like. Because you're, you're changing up the material. Well, I, I think so. And But the material. You've got a couple months to. Got a couple months, but I got to get on. You got to do this shit. You know, yeah. like, I, I got to start really thinking about it. But, um. No, but it's hard to think about when you have this other thing, whatever. So jaredfree.com for tickets. Um, I'm also putting up more uh, content on my punch-up page. There's a thing called punch-up, mm -hmm. and you can give your email. I want your email is basically what I want. Give him your email. Give me, my, give me your email. So you go to my ticket page. You can sign up, for, sign up with your email, and you get more videos. Like I have like the ick show is there, which is cool. I did a whole ick show. Great. Women came up to a you know, men and women came out to a mic and just like told us their ex and we fucked around. I had special guests. All right. That's done with plug city. Let's jump right in. Let's do it. We uh, did it. <laughs>
A lot of male emails this week. Yes. Um, just want to shout out Love our male that. listeners. Yeah. So, I mean, you can a lot hear more me. more men than I think admit. I think so, too. Yes. And uh, a lot of people hear me, you know, go on and on about my dating stuff. And I'm like, it, it, it's relatable. And I scream it. But then I read these emails. I'm like, these are the thoughts of real men, real daters. They're out there. Yeah. And I'm hearing them. It's so interesting to see the difference to me. Big I difference. love hearing from men. If you're a man, write in. If your question's good, you know. I love, love this it. first one. This is like one. light and easy, but it's also like a real thing it's, crazily. It yeah. speaks to a lot. All right, I'll read it. Hello, j and Feather Feather. I'm a 34-year-old male writing in because I've received many messages today all saying the same thing. A well-known dating show with an absurd premise is casting in my area, and various friends and coworkers are telling me to apply. Such the plight of a 30-year-old dater. Do you get that? Well, uh, yeah. If you're in your 30s, people see the dating show come up. You don't have anyone. <laughs> you should go. You should go on. And you it's should. like fodder for a married couple to push right. you towards it. It's like you know? they're living vicariously right. through you. You have the time. You don't have anything to do. Go. <laughs> you know. You don't have any issue embarrassing yourself. Right. I'm currently single and in a great place in my life. Part of me says, why the hell not? The other says, are you fucking crazy? Desperate? Both? My current dating life consists mostly of hinge dates, and this seems like a fun and exciting adventure. Jared, would you ever consider it? How about you, Jordana? If you were single, what do you think? Thanks. So what do you think? This 34-year-old man is wondering, should he go on Love is Blind? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the only one that, like, I'm, th that's the show that came to mind right. for me. It's, they go by area. Um, to me, it's a, it's, it would be too big of a risk for me to take for me to go on it. Okay. Why is for I, you? Because to me, it's like, there's more potential for a bad humiliating experience, mm -hmm. I think, than being the star and hitting it off. Like you hear much more about the people who are made fun of on the show than the people who are like the heroes of the show. There's way right. fewer of the heroes and knowing myself and my personality, I don't think I'd be the hero. Right. I <laughs> I would definitely, well, I get asked a lot. Like, yeah. would you go, the, you know, I get asked, would you go on The Bachelor or The Bachelorette? Yeah. I, I don't think they would ever cast me. Would I do it? If they did. If they, if get they were like, you. Jared, you're going to be The Bachelor. I wouldn't oh. want to go on the show with the house and live with the other 20 year They don't do that, though. I know. you got to pay so your dues. I, I'm not going to pay my dues. Right. I, 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 my dues, this okay. is my dues. Yeah, I, would I be The Bachelorette? Yeah. You would? I'd be the bachelorette. I wouldn't be like the contestant on no, the bachelor. No, would you be the bachelorette? No, I would be the bachelorette because also the bat they like prop up the bachelor and the bachelorette. They don't right. they don't want to embarrass those people. They want to make them look like the most eligible person in Oh, America. I think I would be totally embarrassed as the bachelor. No, you wouldn't. They would prop me up, but I would make sure I would look like <laughs> the like it would You wouldn't be, make it easy for them. No. To <laughs> this would be I mean like I could play that part, but I would be, if I was to be The Bachelor, I would be the most honest. I I would, like, I would really be the most disgusting version of myself. Right. And because I do would want to find someone. Here's the thing. I, I thought about this. I put it into pros and cons. Can okay. I read them to you? Yeah, let's hear it. Going on the show, there are pros and cons. So, like, for this guy, 34, he's single. His friends all seem to like him enough to push him to go on this show. They think it would be fun for them to watch. It would be. I said, you know, going on a sh uh, show at 34, here are the positives. It could happen. Maybe you meet the love of your life. Okay. In the sa let's not, everyone's so negative about dating shows. Sure. It could happen. So could the lottery. Sure. <laughs> you might find a level of fame that at a minimum gets you a side hustle. So you're going to make some extra money. That's true. I didn't even think about the money aspect of it. Right. You're going to make some dough. If you get to like the final four of The Bachelor, you might never have to work again. Might not. <laughs> But at a minimum, you're going to get invited to a couple parties. They're going to give you a couple grand. Make a few, probably $100,000. Good for say. you. Yeah. The show is actually a marketing device for your dating life. So you, by the nature of you going up the, on the show, it is putting you on camera as a single person. So hypothetically, the love of your life could see you, connect with you, DM you. Sure. You can go on a date with that person. So, it, so on that... On that note, a positive, it changes things up. You're on, you said you're on dating apps, you have a happy life, but you're on one road. This is a nice little right turn. Okay. Fun experience. Just something fun. To say you did. Say you sure. did.
Okay, now let's go to the negatives. You ready? Most likely it's a waste of time in finding love. In finding love. Most people don't. Most right. likely this is a dead end. You're not going to find the love of your life. If that's something that's important to you, dating show is probably a waste of time. Sure. Numbers wise. It puts you on display for more women who you'd be more inclined to fuck than become married to. Also true. So you might find people who are attracted to you for just being on TV. And again, distraction. If you want a relationship, that is a dead end. You make some money from the fame you've gotten and you believe that this should be your actual career. And you spend a year on the circuit go, uh, of, of going to events and clubs and getting brand deals. During that time, you get into drinking every night. You put on some weight. You have sex with, a ra with random women. One woman claims she's pregnant. The baby is yours. The money starts to dry up. You've gained a lot of weight. Yes, you're the former bachelor, but you're not aspirational anymore. You try to make it work with the woman. She's a total monster and doesn't like you once the fame goes away. You try to go back to your job, but that ship has sailed. Now you're getting your real estate license and moving to a suburb outside of Nashville, Tennessee, because it's affordable and near the kid and it's growing. It's a growing housing market. You're now on the apps and most of the questions are like, hey, are you the were you the bachelor? And you can never fully trust anyone unless assuming you get into therapy. The bachelor. Yes. Right. So you become a bit of a recluse. You keep the blinds down uh, because it gets hot in Nashville. You do weekends with the kid at McDonald's Play Place. You go to a local bar. They all know you there, but they don't know your past. It's comforting there. They have free popcorn. You, <laughs> this is Chris you, you go. You go there nightly. If you sell one house a month, you should be good. The brand deals are gone. You try and do a watch party for the show every now and again, but the last one was just you and four other women sitting at a table in the corner of an Applebee's. You could barely see the TV. You had to turn over the side of the booth to make, to make out what happened. You get so drunk at the local bar that they start asking you to chill on the popcorn. It's free, but people usually get other food, they say. <laughs> you say, don't talk to me that way. I was the bachelor. They say, go home, Randy. That's enough. You walk home. The house is a mess. You look up at the wall. It's a poster of you holding the rose. 34, a gorgeous version of what you used to be. You lay down. Maybe the apps weren't that bad. <gasps> wow, that's a tale. So. Ghost of Christmas future. You either find, <laughs> have a good time, or you're alone drunk in Nashville. I think. In a one-bedroom home. 34. With a kid. Yeah. I think 34 is a little too old to I go think on so these shows. Too. I think it's over. It's uh, Fun time's over. Yes. If he was 24, I might say differently. Right. Because um, here's the other thing. I wouldn't date a 34-year-old who had been on these shows because I would hope that by the time they're 34, they cannot take off that much time of work because right. they have like a well-established... Maybe that's like the gendered difference sure. too. It's, and I think remember talking to Andy Dorfman about this, like mm. when she was the bachelorette where she was like a lot of the, like a 24 year old woman who's on the bachelorette is like more of much more of a catch than a 24 year old guy who like has no career going on. And absolutely there's like a little bit of a double standard there. I've always um, believed that the bachelorette should the cast of men should have been in their 40s. Yeah, because that's because it's like but it's also like you wouldn't want to date a 40 year old guy who's willing to take off three months of work. But if he could, I guess if he, was that, if he was successful yeah, enough, that, you want to have 30 successful dudes. Right. But usually they're like, right, out, like, a, well, we're going to have the golden bachelorette. And uh, oh, amazing. They, they, I've heard well, the men on there. Well, it's like again, you got to be 24 60s. or like 64. Right. Yeah. It's well, when can you go to Europe? Yes. You, know, like, you want it to be that like they've got enough going on right. that it would be tough for them to take off this amount of time. Absolutely. So if I heard a guy, 34, he's able to take off three months to go on this dating show, I'm sure. kind of like, what else, what's is he going ambitious? On is he kind of just fucking around? If I heard he did, if I dated a 20, 34 year old who said when he was 24, he did this, I'd be like, that's fun. Right. And now he's a lawyer. Like there was a guy that just got kicked off the bachelor at, and he was a 24 year old med student. And like, I literally screamed at the TV, go back to med school. Yeah. Like just, this was fun. That's what I'm saying. You went to Australia, fun, you saw New Zealand. Fun and flirty, cool. 24. Right. A little like, eh, uh, right. 34. So yeah, so again. Great like, pros and cons list though. Thank you. 
<laughs> can paint quite a picture. Um, no, but I, I, I guess like that takes away my one positive of like it puts you on display. You're only getting put on like it, it's more likely you're being put on display to single people who wouldn't be really a great match as far as like starting a life together. Right. Because some people just see people on TV and they go, wow. Right. Like you did something cool. And I don't know if that's a great. Yeah. I don't know if it would bring you the happy. You might also become like a fame monster, which is the other. Well, that's the problem. The, yeah. the, the going on a reality show. You get a if taste. You, if you can resist temptation, then you're going to be okay. That's the only way to go on a reality show is if you're good at resisting temptation. Right. Or and if you're and if you're squeaky clean, squeaky clean and resist temptation. Yeah. Bad for on camera stuff. So you're probably not going to get that famous. Right. <laughs> right. Like we That's want true. the people that are, you know, susceptible to temptation some, and not squeaky clean. Those are the people who pop off. Unless you're Sean Lowe. Well, how old was he when he went on? He was like probably in his 20s, but he's a born again Christian. Right. And he's not like he comes off squeaky clean and you have the woman. They, they they make the woman look crazy. Right. And he you know what I mean? And now he's got a full career off of this thing. Sure. He's the guy they always bring back, right? Yeah, well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. He's well, like, well, you got to go born again. It's <laughs> unlikely to, yeah, you've got to not sleep with any of the women on the fantasy suite. Good right. temptation, you can go on the show. Bad, if you're susceptible, if you like a third martini, probably not the not place for you. For you. When, that's why I'm saying we wouldn't do well. Let's go to the awkward encounter, which I'm going to give a trigger warning. This is a very yeah. serious awkward encounter. This yes. is more warning than it is fun tale. This one was a little scary. A little scary. So I just want to make sure people are aware of what we're getting into. That I we're think aware of it also. We're, we yes. are aware. It, it made me, it kind of sent a shiver down my spine. Um, I just want to submit something that might benefit other women. After I left my engagement, I have dated the same type of men over and over again. Everything is normal and great. And then boom, complete 180. Boom, ghost me completely. Boom, married with four kids in another state. But this last <laughs> one truly beats them all. So, I mean, we're going to have to start figuring out our picker here. Right. That like might be a little, you got to... It isn't all luck after a while. Right, like the, right. <laughs> boom. Not to the, blame the victim. Right, but, but like... You have an even crazier story than married with four kids in another state? Like, <laughs> so, okay. I'm not going to go into details for my personal safety, but trust me, it's crazy. I went to California to meet a guy on a work trip who I had been sleeping with since February on and off. Always knew he was a fuckboy, but never any intention of dating him. Well, she doesn't say where they met. Which is, right, and I you're wonder. going to another state on a work trip, but also to fuck this guy. <laughs> Okay, again. Fine. Sure. Good I, for you, I but wanted, like... I would like to know a little bit more about like the background of how they came to be on and off. Right. Went on the trip for a short vacay for myself and actually enjoyed being in his company. Thought, wow, maybe I can see myself uh, seeing him more often and see where it can go. The last day I found multiple IDs with a different name on each of them and his picture. I fucking panicked and got really scared. Searched the place for cameras and everything. I played it cool and left, and left safely. Long story short, the name I knew him by was not his real name. He had made up different identity and then denied it. With my profession, I never... Uh, would have thought someone would do this to me. So we don't know their profession, yeah. but I, a private investigator. Uh, 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 she works at the DMV. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let alone someone who is also in the same profession. Doesn't say the profession. Okay. So maybe he's like showing up to like corporate like events. Maybe that's where she met him. That's what I'm saying. Like, right. was it like a, we're in Vegas on a convention. We all work in medical sales and he fakes these like, uh, he, he becomes a fake person to try and fuck at the medical sales conference. Is right. That, is that his game? I don't I'm know. I'm thinking of like, listen, I'm thinking of like wedding crashers right now. Like, <laughs> like, what, like he's got all these like things to fuck, like Will Ferrell's character. Yeah. He's, you or, know, or like, he's cheating on someone. Right. Yeah. Um, Hinge should verify IDs. They write. I, I agree they with do. that. Don't they verify identities somehow? Or that's just the picture matches the. I don't know, but I do think, why wouldn't they have a thing where you can, like, scan the barcode on your driver's license? Right. Like, I don't know why they are. I guess, I mean, this guy has a driver's license, so maybe that's. Right. <laughs> you get, got a fake. How, where would you even get a fake ID? Like, you at have this to be age? a real sociopath. 
I don't know any other way to check someone's identity than asking for proof, which is awkward. Yeah, I, I hear the, the issue that they have. Or looking at their social media, even if they even have it. We can meet up with a lot of different people nowadays, and I never thought in a million years I would meet someone who created a fake identity. Would answers to that fake name and ever, with answers to the fake name and everything. It's so scary. I don't know what he's hiding, but I'm glad I wasn't hurt because it only gives me crazy vibes. Yeah, I'm with you. Sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, I think like in the best case scenario, this guy is CIA. Sure. That I was trying to think like I what's guess... the only answer he could have to many identities? I'm James Bond. Or I'm cheating on someone and so I'm like don't want to put my real name on the apps. Fine. Right? But I don't know why would you need another ID? There's uh, obvious <laughs> He's in the I fake ID know. market. I'm, right. Well, th this is the problem with trying to figure out a fucking crazy person. Right. It only gets crazier from here. This is how, like, you know, movies are written. You know, like, I, I, what I feel bad for and is that this person, I mean, this is when someone says, I would never go on a dating app when I'm going to meet a stranger. They're always going to be morally correct. Like, yeah, that that is the premise of a dating app is mm. that you're going to meet a stranger and it's dangerous. So like and the reality of life is anyone could lie to anyone. I could sit here and tell you any story right. I want. And why would I do that? Yeah. And look out for things that seem weird, like get more in touch with your gut on those things, because someone who has a wife and kids in a different state is going to be acting differently than someone. Right. Who's why not. are you going to Missouri <laughs> <laughs> for what? I do work out there. What type of work? Right. Why Why are you so weird with your phone? Right. <laughs> right. So. Let's do another email. Let's UUP at Betches.com. Keep sending them in. Really great emails. Love them. Dear J&J, &J, begin. This one. All right. Great one. All right. Began listening tw two and a half years ago after getting out of a 14-year toxic relationship with an abusive alcoholic. What a sentence. At a time, it's a heavy episode today. <laughs> yeah. At a time when I felt small and at my lowest, your podcast gave me comedic relief to relationships. The idea uh -huh. of dating again and helped me feel like I wasn't alone. So thank you. Wow, that's Love a beautiful that. message. For background, I owned a gym and was home with my ex. We started dating when I was 22. I was completely love bombed, was convinced my family was the enemy, they're anything but, and have since been more supportive than I deserve, lost all my friends, was broken in debt, and I truly believed that without him, I was nothing and would have nothing. I'm now 38. The comeback tale starts. Yes. I'm now 38, <laughs> have taken over the gym, house payments, and have an amazing relationship with my family and an incredible group of friends and financially stable, and I'm in a new relationship. A recent Sunday special has had me thinking. You guys spoke about the difficulties of deciding to get into a serious relationship when you've been single for an extended period in your late 30s, have an established schedule of life, and that, uh, that changing because of a relationship seems almost daunting. My boyfriend has been a friend for over five years. He's a gym member of the gym that I own. Uh, over the last year and a half, we became closer, having more of a friends with benefits situation at times. I was resistant to being in a relationship, not only because he was paying member of my gym and we were in the same friend group, but because I was still healing from my previous physically and emotionally abusive partner. He'd been single most of the time that I've known him. We are both homebodies and I have a very different schedules. But the more time we spent together in and outside the gym, the more apparent it was that this worked and we got it right. Since February, we've had talks of exclusivity, met each other's families, celebrated my birthday, graduated to girlfriend slash boyfriend, LOL, and moved him into his first home. We don't do a lot of sleepovers. I wake up at 4 a.m. daily and have two dogs at home. And prior to last weekend, he was dealing with the stress of the move, so dates aren't frequent, which he shared his stress and reasoning with me. We instead have a list of, re of the restaurants we are going to try when life calms down. But the, we the weekend of his move, I stayed over Thursday through Sunday, and we never disagreed or got annoyed. We spent time together and time apart in different rooms, had dinners out, had movie nights in. He asked and valued my opinion for setting up his house, gave me a key and code, and it's the most normal, natural, and safe I've ever felt with everyone with anyone. We haven't discussed living together, and I swore to myself I wouldn't do that again unless I knew we were getting married. But now I'm curious. Is this the natural flow of a healthy relationship? We both have su successful jobs. We wouldn't be moving in out of convenience or necessity. Or am I better keeping the mindset of a ring on my finger, finger before I pull that trigger? 
I don't anticipate this conversation happening just yet, but when you're in your late 30s, have a career, friends, hobbies, and homes separate of each other, how do you navigate the progression of life together? Because it seems what started as a slow burn relationship quickly is turning serious, and it's not scary like I expected it to be when I was first learning to date again. Thank you for doing the Lord's work, a once damaged, now loved, and thriving Betch. Well, congratulations on all the success and you know coming out of a, t- a tough situation. Yeah. Um, I love this email. I don't have an answer for it. I was going to say something. Is, is the is the ultimate question she's asking is like, should I be engaged to someone before I move in with them? Is that like kind I, of what she's I, asking? I guess, but I also think she's like, to me, she's like, how do you know if this is the one? I don't know. What I what do you think? I, I think I can understand why she's feeling like this. It's like there's no, because there's no, it's not like, work where the next step's so logical or it's so mm-hmm. clear that one thing's like a better than another. Um, and you know, some people talk to you about like they knew the moment they knew that it was all coming together. But I think most things for most people, unless your personality is one of like extreme romanticism or mm-hmm. ext- you're prone to being like frequently like in love and all in and like, that's just your personality. I think for most people, they're making decisions that feel good and they feel right at the time, but you can ne- never know a hundred percent right. for and sure. I, and I think to add on to that, as you're single later in life, you're kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop. You're kind of waiting for that moment. And I'm sure mm-hmm. she has a very uh, tra- traumatic, yeah, you know, relationship that she got out of. So she's wondering, we were happy once, mm-hmm. you know, we had the gym together once, we had the housing together once, we thought that we were doing the right thing. All of a sudden, yeah, what the fuck? I'm with this abusive alcoholic partner. So I'm she think, got out of it. And she right? got out of it, yeah. and now she's doing great. And, you know, I think as you get older, you become more safe. You know, like that's the in hard, whatever your routine in whatever is, you're yeah. doing. Like you go, you, you know, would I start doing comedy at 39? Probably uh, not. Probably not. Right. I did it when I was company? 25. Would you start 34? the company, Probably right? Not. 34. That's the thing. Like, yeah. you become more safe, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. Well, here, You know, I think mm-hmm. for her, it's a bad thing. She's being so safe. And I, listen, I could say this to myself. You're being so safe that you're giving no chance to the possibility of great. Totally. And I think there's this... I think that people underestimate how much, like, things working out is due to luck. Right. I think people assume it's all about like, you know, you made the right decisions and you did the, like, I think everyone's decisions are half chance. You could go right. into things having the most positive, like all the ducks align and everything feels great. And that could fall apart. Or you could go into something where like, you're a little unsure. Maybe mm-hmm. the other person's not like gung ho. And it turns out to be amazing. Well, if the uh, go ahead, I'm sorry for. So, in my opinion, it's like people I think attribute too much to, and this is goes with it for anything that you're doing that you're like, there's so much pressure to make the right mm-hmm. decision, go the right path, pick the right job, pick the right company, whatever. It's like most of the time when things work out, at least half of it I think is just chance. There's no way to really know. Well, if the definition, as I've always known it, the definition of luck to me. And to a lot of people, I'm not going to make up this saying, is when preparation meets opportunity. Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay. So if we go by that, what should she prepare? How would you prepare to be th- th- for this relationship to be the lucky one? So if we right. work our way back. To me, it sounds like she needs to say a few of these things to the person that she's dating. Sure. How would you prepare? Well, I prepare by communicating to my partner that I said I would never move in with someone before I got married. This is going in a way that is getting serious for me. I think, what do you think about that? You know, like. That's a good start. That's a good start. Yeah. To me, that's preparing. That's, you're preparing the person on the other side for, you know, uh, you know the what's going on in your head. Right. I don't know. The, the, this is working it backwards yeah. a little bit. And I think also, I agree with that. And I think to give on the other end. Preparing for the best, like Mm -hmm. by preparing, by having that conversation, but also knowing that, you know, what one of the positive things about having been in this abusive relationship, and that sounds weird to say, Mm -hmm. is the idea that something terrible kind of happened to you and you got out of it. And you're okay. You figured out how to get out of it. You came out on the other side. You've got a great life now. So 
the feeling that even if you make the wrong decision, even if you move in and you're not engaged, or even if you get engaged and it's not it's not who you thought it was, right? You can get out. You've and done it before. You know how to do it. Totally. And this also includes like I think as you get older, like it, you have to, like, and you start dating, you have to have uncomfortable conversations. Like, and I'm sure when she was 22, they didn't move in together with a thought of ever moving out. Right. And I think at this age, you can have that conversation. Like if I was to like, if I was this person, hey, you just bought a house. I have a house. We both own houses, but we're this relationship is getting more serious. One of the options could be your house is an Airbnb now. You move in with me. Doesn't we, work out. We'll readdress no. in a year. Right. You only do a year lease because that makes me feel comfortable that we're not like, you know, now we can check in in a year. Right. You know, like the idea of moving out. And not being in a relationship is now on the table. Yeah. You know, like, I, I think, like, that's got to be part of the conversation of, like, presenting options A, B, and C. And sometimes those options are uncomfortable, but probably not as much anymore. Totally. The idea at 38 that... And that's the benefit of being kind of in that older position and more mature. It's like if someone said that to you at 22, you'd be like, what? What's what? wrong with you? Right. Right. Whereas, why are you ruining my wedding day? Yeah. Or <laughs> like, why are you moving? So, why are you moving so fast to play out these things? Like, I think anyone who's dating in their late 30s assumes that their partner is looking for something serious. Right. And I would I would say that to myself at 27. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's be a little bit more pragmatic. Yeah. You know, and. That's not romantic, but then again, I think that goes into the luck of it all. Yes, yeah. we got lucky that we have this great relationship. Well, we did a lot of talking early on that was a little uncomfortable. Right? No, totally. And I think people like congratulate themselves a lot for stuff that is luck, and people berate themselves mm -hmm. for things that also was luck. Like, right? There wasn't much you could do to change it in either way. And so I think the only thing you can do to like get through it is to feel like if it works out, amazing. If it doesn't. You'll be fine. We'll be okay. Let's play some games. Let's do it. UUP at Betches.com. Keep sending them in. Red flag or deal breaker? Need your take on first date drink ordering etiquette. Are you ready? I'm ready. I went on a first date for drinks, and when I arrived at the restaurant five minutes later, he was sitting out at our table drinking an old-fashioned. Red flag or deal breaker? He doesn't wait for you to arrive before he orders a drink. Thanks. He <laughs> premature drink ordered. P.S. We ended up going home together two drinks later. We lived together three years later, so I guess it was okay. But uh, it was a brunch table topic at the time. So you get to the date, they already got a drink in front of them. I'm cool with it. I like it. Right. Yeah. Comfy, they're, cozy. They're getting, yeah, they're settling. If I got to a date early, I would order a drink. Right. I did this recently. I got there early, and then I was like. What are you like, supposed to do? Just like stand at the bar? Well, I, the, here's, if anyone's like uncomfortable about going on dates, here's something that's helped me. Mm -hmm. Is because people come up to you. Do you need anything? Are you waiting for someone? What's going on? And you can't be like, my wife's coming soon. Like, you know, like, you know, like, don't. I think it makes it really comfortable to have like a line to say, uh, just waiting for a friend. Right. Calling it a friend. I like that. Been very helpful to me because in these social things, you're at a date, you're waiting for someone to get there. Everyone's got questions. You need a menu. You can be ordering food. There's a lot of like decisions to make. Hey, I'm just waiting on a friend. Yeah. And people back off right away, but it's made it very helpful and for me. If I was waiting for a friend and I was right. having a drink with a friend, I would also order a drink. Right. I did this. <laughs> I and I said to the, I was I got a drink thinking like they're gonna be a while, and then they got there earlier, and I'm sitting there with like half a drink, and I'm like, apologies. Like I said, I was like, apologies. Yeah. I thought you were gonna be a little bit late, so I ordered. Would a Would you quick be offended drink. if someone had a not at right. all? Not at all. If they ordered, if we went, we're going to dinner, and they ordered dinner with it before I got there. <laughs> if I got there five minutes late, and they had put in their their entree order. I right. would be like. What All the right, fuck? that's a little weird. Right. A drink, that's fine. There is some fun in like discussing what are you going to get? You're going to get a cocktail, you're going to get a glass of wine, matching drink orders is a little bit right. cute. But I would I, kind of, that's why I kind of like if they had ever had a drink. I'm like, "All right. They've set they're the setting tone. the tone. We don't right. have to discuss it like, you know, sometimes get Right. A, I be, uh, you know, but the, the only problem for me is that now I'm a drink ahead and I'm a fast drinker. Right. And well, I'm like a, if he's drunk, then that's a different <laughs> story. <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> Welcome to the date. Yeah. J-Train's got it revved up. <laughs> That's what I say on my desk. Hot. All right. Let's uh, do another. Hey, J&J. Love you guys. I've been listening since the start. Anyway, I matched with this guy on Tinder in 2012. He was a baseball player at UPenn. Ooh. 
Hot. We tried to meet, went to meet him at his place, and I was stood up. <gasps> Surprise, LOL. So obviously, after being stood up, I had to see it through. The back and forth texting went on so long that I never actually saved his number. I just knew it by heart. Okay. Healthy. We texted here and there, and nothing ever happened. I was over him. He was over me. Just ended. Just never ended up working out. So anyways, after one night, after nursing finals, I, nursing finals, I went out with the girls and got some margaritas. Mind you, this is now 2016. So four years of just texting. They're still texting? This is weird. I prank phone called him a couple. He's a, he's a UPenn baseball player. Yeah. I get it. Um, I prank He's really, him. really being mature. <laughs> she prank called him? I prank phone called him a couple times. <laughs> I knew he was from New Jersey and I was house sitting for a family friend in New Jersey. So I did one last final push. I, she, at this point, you can't be surprised. You're pranking each other before you even right. meet? The tiger ate my hand. All I was doing was like flicking it in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> I texted him, said I was in the area, and this was the last time I would ever reach out. Sure. Left the ball in his court, and, and of course, he said yes. So he came over three nights in a row. First two nights, we had sex. It lasted all five seconds, both nights. <laughs> hey, she That's invited him back. That's what he calls back. a you problem. <laughs> <laughs> the last night, he came over, and we had dinner and watched a movie. I gave him a BJ and tried to kiss him after. He stopped me, and trauma set in for future BJs, and said, before you kiss me, brush your teeth. Me being the naive, no confidence bitch, did it. Sure enough, after coming downstairs from brushing my teeth, we had up and left. He had up and left. Gone. Oh my God. Poof. Never to hear from him again. Lesson learned. Don't always have to see it through. He definitely didn't deserve me. I texted well, him. He doesn't even know you. I texted him and said something along the lines of, wow, you really just left? And of course, no response. Anyway, it's all fun and jokes now, and it's always a fun story to tell. Is it? Um, Is it a fun? Right. I, <laughs> this doesn't sound that fun. But wanted to get your thoughts on the initial offense. Red flag or deal breaker, he won't kiss you after a blowjob until you brush your teeth. Sincerely, now you see me. P.S. For any other listeners, whenever a guy tells you to brush your teeth after a BJ, he can go fuck himself. Okay. Well, I want to say to this listener, thank you for writing in. <laughs> um, I don't want to, like, blame any. Like, this guy this is all very immature both on both ends. Right. I, I hate this sucks, email. I hate, I, 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 pre, I like this listener, this emailer. Yeah. I hate that this happened. Yeah. You know, like this sucks. It all feels very icky. It's icky. I don't and like it's also it. very like Im the immature is the word. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're pranking him. He's coming over being like, rude. right. And this makes it sound like we're taking, you got what you asked for. No, no, no. I hope it doesn't sound that way Not because like, I, I this just, guy's an asshole. he's an asshole. He's a piece of shit. Okay. Asking anyone to brush their teeth after a blowjob? No, I'm. I yeah. don't give a fuck. I'm. I'm kissing. I'm licking. I don't give. And a fuck. And if someone said that to me, I would leave. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> no, no, no. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you went and did it. And listen, I. I Which think again, not to blame the victim. Right. Well, this email reads as like, "Hey, this isn't like healthy behavior right. from all ends of this spectrum." Like, I, I want this emailer to know that this story isn't fun. <laughs> don't tell it right, like, don't tell it to anyone but your therapist it's weird right like there's yeah. things to unpack here yeah more it feels than very... it's like fun table fodder i think it's like a self-esteem thing both of you guys i feel like kind of hate yourselves mm. right <laughs> so for this to be like the dynamic right. that occurred right if you can't even taste your own cum then you must hate yourself that's a little what bit. both of you yeah <laughs> right. but this is a good thing to unpack with your therapist yeah um Deal breaker. <laughs> deal break. Yeah. Deal breaker. All of it. All right. Last one. J and J, Candace and Bell included. Long time listener. Huge fan of the podcast. We always assemble the group chat anytime Jared is in town for comedy in DC. Thank you. Not too long ago, I wrote in the You Up Instagram story box for Red Flag or Deal Breaker, to which almost everyone said Deal Breaker. But wanted to give you the full story to get your thoughts. My boyfriend, 27, and I have been together for two years. She's 30. Oh, she's 30. He's 27. They've been together for over two years. We met at a bar and ended up seeing each other exclusively for about five months before being official. I should note that when we first met, he and I were not looking for serious relationships, but we ended up only really talking to and hanging out with each other and both not actively dating others uh, slash on the apps. One night, about four months in, while we were uh, still in the not official phase, his female friend encouraged me to go back on the apps because I'm not really good enough physically for him. How is that even said? To her? Yeah, his friend said his to her. His female friend said to her that she is not physically 
good enough. Good enough for the guy she was currently hooking up with. Can you imagine saying that to someone to their I, face? I, this story is so <laughs> I, I can't believe that. How would for a you second. say that? How would they, how would you even bring that up? You should get back on the apps. <laughs> it's not a match. Listen, fugly. What is she? Someone's like mean, <laughs> mean immigrant grandma. <laughs> <laughs> That's like usually when you hear this story, it's like right. someone's like Someone horribly not, evil, like mom not familiar who's from, with the language who's from a different country yeah. says something this offensive. Yeah, it's like too fat for him. Yeah, you know, right. like they would say it like, like that. No yeah. one really says that. In person. Yeah, it's insane. This is and if the friend is trying to like give like if his friend is trying to let you know like he's not into it, there's other ways to do it. <laughs> Like you could just say, "Hey, I think he's you like." You should probably not get back really, on that app. Right. It like, gets worse. It gets it's worse. worse. It gets okay. way it. worse. All right. She took His female to friend encouraged me to go back on the ass because I am not really good enough physically for him. Crazy, which I took offense to and brought it up, and he said that wasn't true, and he isn't sure why she would say something like that to me. What, what's he gonna say? Uh, <laughs> I let. Yeah, it go. you should go back on. <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it, I let it go thinking maybe she was just really into him and this was her way of telling me to back off. That's a direction. Sure. Fast forward a year into the relationship. I searched my name on his phone in front of him. We were joking about how we have nothing to hide on our phones. Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> this fun joke just became not fun. And I saw a few messages to his friends where when we first met, he wrote that I was too ugly to date, so he didn't actually see us dating, but saw us more as hookup buddies. So his female friend was telling the truth. This Ouch. is out of a like a bad rom-com. Who would say this to someone? I like her, but she's too ugly to date. I mean, this is, that's like horrific. To a woman? Well, he was saying it to the group chat. I mean, <laughs> like, even come up? I mean, how do you say that and then date and then yeah. you have to be around your friends? Uh, I don't know. That obviously shattered me, but my fault, but my fault, <laughs> oh God, for even searching that. Sir, no, why? He said he had nothing to hide. It was a fun game. Yeah. That, that obviously shattered me, but my fault for even searching this since everyone is entitled to their own private thoughts and opinions. Well, I'm, mm. I think you're giving a lot of leeway. When asked about it, he said he wrote those things because he was trying to deny liking me to his friends early on, which I guess I can see happening. I probably have said not nice things about men prior to getting to know them, so I understand to an extent she is being very empathetic to this. Um, but of course I was still am still hurt and embarrassed that he even would say those things about me to his friends and then go on to dating me fast forward to present day. We have a really great relationship. I love him dearly. I've talked about getting engaged in the future, but I still think about his comment once in a while and it makes me sad. I know he loves me and shows it with his actions and words. And these are comments from two plus years ago, but it's just something that lingers in the back of my head sometimes so much so that I'm writing in. Ha ha. But I <laughs> <laughs> sounds <laughs> like half hearted. Yeah. Ah. Um, but I just sometimes think maybe it's just me self-sabotaging or internalizing because things are, are going well. Uh, so anyway, anyhow, after reading all this, do you still think it's a red flag or a deal breaker? What are your thoughts on relationships that start like this and isn't normal? Thanks for all you do. Sincerely, not the ideal our story page. Big personality girl. Aww. I, I, Here's I, the I, I th let me just say to this emailer, thank you for writing in. This is a very hard story to rehash, I am sure. Right. I'm sorry this happened. This sounds like it's out of like, a poorly written rom-com like it is like mean girls right it's i don't understand how this guy could have a wouldn't like scream at his friend for telling her that i right who would I, say that to someone that's the, the most fucked up thing to me is the is woman the saying to the taking friend it upon herself you're not hot enough for him you should get back on the apps that's an absurd gross thing to say to someone obviously fucked up that he said that she was too ugly to date very messed up and very hurtful to see. On the other hand, okay. I do agree that sometimes in the beginning of dating, especially if you're more immature you're, or you're younger when you start dating someone, I can see why you might like make fun of them a little bit before you're fully in. To call them ugly is a little bit more hurtful, I think, because it's not even like 
Sure. Do you know what I mean? It's like it shows your attraction, especially for a man. I think that would hurt me a lot. Well, they but met like, when have they I were... have I made fun of people that I wound up dating? Yeah. Yeah. Same. <laughs> no, like I, I actually am not. I'm in no way saying that what this guy did is so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like I actually, this happens. Immature me. Right. Me amongst these immature people. I mean, how many people at, have you showed me at, and I'd been like, that person seems crazy, don't date them. And then you date them and like, you could wind up marrying them. Sure, but that's you <laughs> saying it about the woman. Like, I I can understand he's at 25. There, right. this he, is, well, he's 27 now. Yeah, so so he was begin, 25, sure. 24, immature. It's about bravado and looks and how you compare yourself as a guy to other guys and... Maybe this is the look you're into, but like you know your friends would care about it. shit about it mm -hmm. in the stupid way that people do at that age. So I guess I'm giving him empathy. Right, I'm just saying like, uh, I think I, the she's... fact that he's, he's said it, the ugly, using the word ugly to me is like- It's very extreme. It's very extreme. Saying she's not my type would be like- Less That's not offensive. how an immature person would say right. it. You know, it would, you know, like it's. I've called guys ugly hot that I've hooked up with with for years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to my friends, I know I've said that. To, I didn't say it to them, but right. I would, I would ref, like that's what I'm saying. I'm not. I wouldn't call my say put myself past doing this. Mm -hmm. Although again, I wouldn't say like ugly. I would, I, for me, I'd be like ugly hot. But I think that's still kind of. But even the way she wrote the email, right. like she, this is the story she's telling herself too. So like. I don't like the way the tone of her email is like so forgiving that it's almost like I, I don't. Right. It's like a little bit. I'm, it's a pity party that is we're going to have a deal having. breaker. Should she break up with him? I think they have to talk about it in a different way than they're talking about it. Yeah. Because the way she's giving forgiveness to him is like is is almost like. I don't know. It just sounds not the way I would. I don't. It doesn't sound like they've talked about it. It feels like she's internalized it, too. And she feels really badly about it. Right. Um, which like I get. I, right, but it, right. I think like if she all, showed him mm, this email, yeah, I would be wondering how he would respond. Totally. I would like, also want to see his reaction to seeing that. Like, if I were him, I would have to be horrified. I would, is he like not a big? Is saying it's not a big deal? Right. That's the thing. Like, I would have to. I no matter how great the person was, I'd probably have to end the relationship <laughs> if they knew about this. I would. <laughs> I would back away. I'd You'd back be like, out of it Great, so fucking fast. I have an excuse. Fast. I gotta get out of this. Like, I can't start at this. Like, it'd be too hard for me. I mean, that starts two years in. I know. This is what I'm saying. Like, this is why this is a hard rest. Mother like, of your breaker. children. You built a family with her. Right. Like, like I, because she's like, this is a good relationship. I could see myself marrying this person. But the way she's rationalized it, I think it I don't depends like, on his I, reaction. I, I think so. Like, he would need to, like, not minimize it. To me, this is couples therapy. You need it. Yeah, I need a, now. I need a few sessions uh, just just to get through this one thing. Because I, I don't know. I would always be in the back of my mind. I'm. Not I would never it. forget it. Yeah. If it were me. If you found this. If I what found a do? text, uh, I don't know. I don't. Too, usually date, he's date, too ugly. He's for too me. fucking ugly. For me. For me, I, I'll fuck him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll marry. I'll let him pay for all my shit. I'll marry. Right. I'll let him take me out on ten dates. Right. I don't know. There's a lot of guys that w I I think wouldn't mind. Wouldn't care. Maybe I'm saying I've said this about people. They don't know that I've said this. Right. But I've said this about people that I was attracted to. Would you be able to marry someone that you've said this about? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I don't know if I would be able to. I think it's different for men. Is this as bad as cheating? Finding this out? It's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's hurtful in a different way. Yeah. I think. But I guess in the, I guess the reason I'm thinking of cheating is like, oh, also, he's attracted to other right. people. Uh, I mean, that, I'm not, I'm, I think everyone's attracted to other people. Sure, but to right. act on it. Yeah. Like, you know. To act, right, that's the difference. I think it would depend, like, also on our relate the nature of our relationship. Does does it seem like he's attracted to me right. now? Do I feel loved? Do, do I, I feel sexy around yes. him? Does he compliment me? Or do we seem like we're just friends? That that's important too. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying Is this we need a, more con a partnership or a sexually drip. But then they say the sex runs out. You know, like you, you know, you become. Yeah. I don't know. This is tough.
This is a long episode. It's a good end of the episode. Con- look, the timer, the, the ran, timer ran out of batteries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as we do, as we yeah, do. This yeah, this is what we do. So right. listen, we'll be back uh, on Sunday. I'm excited to see the response to this, but. That's it. And for we us. want to hear back from this person. Yes. If you're out there listening and you hear and you're obviously a fan and you keep up with the podcast, let's hear what happens. Yes. I want to hear what happens next. So bye. bye. The U Up Podcast is produced by Bell Roman and Candice Maniga. Editing by Bell Roman. Social media by Candice Maniga. Be sure to follow at u.up.podcast on Instagram and send us your emails to uup at betches.com. Betches.